Hey gang, Jaguar here, just with another quick pickups video. Uh, I did manage to pick up some things on accident, some things on purpose, and ran into some people that you might know. Now, to start off with, let's go to the things that I picked up on accident. Now, I decided that I was cruising around eBay and saw something for 99 cents and went, ah, click, I'll bid on that. I won it. Now, my least favorite system is the Game Gear. Sorry, Game Gear, people who love it, but it just doesn't hold the nostalgia for me. It doesn't play right, and they put the wrong games on it. Now, the games that they put on it that work right are awesome. The Streets of Rage games, the Sonic games, the, the Moto GPs, those work beautifully. Some of these games do not. It's basically a lot of five Game Gear games, and it started out with uh, Shinobi here. And this game is actually pretty good. I like the way that this plays on the Game Gear, that's just fine. Lion King? Not so much. I don't like the fact that there is not a way to... The screen just seems a little too small for it. And I know that there's a Game Gear has limitations, but it just seems like it could have... It needed a little bit more. Columns? Columns works great on the Game Gear, but it only takes up like the middle two-thirds of the screen, which I don't understand. Like there's a giant empty space over here, and a giant empty space over here. Whatever. The one that actually does work very well is uh, Castle of Illusion starring Mickey Mouse. Actually works very, very well. This is a nice game. And the most egregious of them all and I can't even believe I can't I don't understand what they were thinking is Mortal Kombat 2 now Mortal Kombat 2 had five buttons the Game Gear has two so you have less than half of the buttons to be able to make anything work in this game and it But that's what I picked up on accident, because I bid on something that I really shouldn't have. But, like I said, two of those games in there, awesome. Two of them, eh. One of them, <clears throat> The things that I picked up on purpose, this is the Xbox carrying case. Now, what you would do, and I'll show uh, a review of this later on to show you all the bells and whistles here. But essentially you would load the Xbox up in here and you would leave all the cables and everything in, including the games, controllers, it all fits in here. Nice and neat. I need to, I need to clean it. And then you take it to a friend's, you play it, you take it, you go. But the next thing that I picked up, I was really excited to find this. Uh, it is available uh, for those of you who have uh, Amazon Prime, you can watch it there. But I picked this up for a dollar. And that is Video Games Live Volume 2, the DVD. Now, for those of you who don't know what Video Games Live is, I think I've talked about it before, but it was started by uh, Tommy Talrico, who you guys may know from whatever that. TV show is that he had with the other guy, and it's an amazing, amazing thing to watch. Sealed, brand new, one dollar. Awesome. Now the other thing that I got for a dollar is a little weirder. I really hope that this came out before the Wii, because if it came out after the Wii, I don't know why they bothered to release it, but it is Virtual Ping Pong. You are the game. Be the game. Be the ball, be the ball, be the ball, be the ball. Anyways. Caddyshack reference for those of you. Anyways. But it actually looks pretty neat. I haven't I haven't cracked it open to try it yet, but as you can see, there's the uh, lovely lady in the tennis outfit, for whatever reason, playing ping pong. And I have not figured out how exactly it works. But I look forward to giving this a shot, just... 
because it seems so silly. Now, that does it for stuff pickups. Quick story, I went to a video camp, an arcade auction, and there was there's an arcade uh, here in Texas that the mall is closing down. So the arcade has to sell all of the stuff. They hired the arcade auctioneers that are normally across town in here, and they auctioned off all of the stuff. I'm talking arcade games, gumball machines, ticket counters, change machines, you name it. They, they were selling it. Now, I didn't get to stay the entire time, but while I was there, I did run into Billy and Jay and Dodongo, otherwise known as the Game Chasers. And it was really cool to run into them, and, you know, it, I was, like, moderately starstruck, because I walked by and I went, holy crap, that's... I was like, hey, hey guys. And then I was going to run off, but I ended up sitting and talking with them for about 15, 20 minutes. They let me know a bunch of the cool stuff that they found, so watch their next episode, because it's going to be awesome. And then, you know, we were talking for a while, and then, like, the starstruck w wore away because I'm starstruck, and I'm like, these guys are, they're, they're on the internet, they're on YouTube. And then, like, halfway through talking to them, I realized, like, wait, huh, I'm on YouTube, too. I mean, they have a sponsor, they do a lot more effort, a lot more work into their show, but that was really cool to run into them, and they're, they're really cool guys. It was awesome just chatting with them for a while. Back to pickups. The last five games that I picked up, one was a gift. My wife noticed that uh, Saints Row the Third went on sale on Steam, and she bought it for me. She also bought it for herself, and one of her other friends online has it, so we're all going to get together to play co-op. Oh my god, you're the Saints! You have to sign this for me! Anything for a fan. Hey, Josh Burke. Don't be starstruck. I'm very approachable. You want me to uh, sign your breasts? Uh, no. The next thing that I got is the Humble Bundle. Now, for those of you who don't know what this is, this is a bunch of games that you get put together, and you can pay whatever you want. You can pay a penny, you can pay a thousand dollars. Whatever you want to do in the middle there, that's what you can pay. Now, the cool thing is that these are DRM-free, so you pay a penny, you get to download four games, and then if you pay more than the average that people are paying, you get a fifth game. Now this has been working for, for a while like this. You also get all the soundtracks for the game, which is awesome. And the games this time, and you can go to uh, HumbleBundle.com, and the games are, let me see if I can get them all, Limbo, Amnesia, Sword and Sorcery, Psychonauts, and if you pay more than the average, which as of, I'll show a picture of it over here, as of the recording, you get Bastion. So you get five games for whatever, four games for whatever you're willing to pay, five dollars if you pay more than the average. Now the average is really low because a lot of people are just like, I can pay whatever I want, one penny. Me, I took a look at it and went, okay, Windows, Windows, Windows people are paying this much, Mac people are paying this much, Linux people are paying this much, because it does work on all three of the systems. So I took a look and I went, okay, I'm a Mac guy, screw those Linux guys, I want to pay above the average that they're paying so that our numbers look better. Petty, I know, but... It got more, it, the money goes to the developers, to charity, and to the people who actually run the Humble Bundle. So those are the only things that I picked up. Um, that's it. As always, thank you for watching, and play on!